In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's great to have our kids here for the school mass to, we, to where we can become God's light in the world, as we just sang. Let's reflect on the times when we allow God's love to be visible through us and the times when we do not. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O oh God, you have united many nations in confessing your name. Grant, we pray, the grace to will and to do what you ask, that the people called to your kingdom may be one in the faith of their hearts and in the homage of their actions. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Samuel. David spoke to Saul, let your majesty not lose courage. I am at your service to go and fight this Philistine. But Saul answered David, you cannot go up against this Philistine and fight with him, for you are only a youth, while he has been a warrior from his youth. David continued, the Lord who delivered me from the claws of the lion and the bear will also keep me safe from the clutches of this Philistine. Saul answered David, go, the Lord will be with you. Then, staff in hand, David selected five smooth stones from the Wadai and put them in his pocket of his shepherd's bag. With his sling also ready to hand, he approached the Philistine. With his shield bearer marching before him, the Philistine also advanced closer and closer to David. When he had sized David up and seen that he was youthful and ruddy and handsome in appearance, the Philistine held David in contempt. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come against me with a staff? Then the Philistine cursed David by his gods and said to him, Come here to me, and I will leave your flesh for the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David answered him, You come against me with a sword and a spear and a scimitar, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel that you have insulted. Today the Lord shall deliver you into my hand. I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will leave your corpse and the corpses of the Philistine army for the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Thus, the whole land shall learn that Israel has a God. All this multitude, too, shall learn that it is not by a sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he shall deliver you into our hands. The Philistine then moved to meet David at close quarters, while David ran quickly toward the battle line in the direction of the Philistine. David put his hand into the bag and took out a stone and hurled it with a sling and struck the Philistine on the forehead. 
the stone embedded itself in his brow, and he fell prostrate on the ground. Thus, David overcame the Philistine with a sling and a stone. He struck the Philistine mortally and did it without a sword. Then David ran and stood over him with the Philistine's own sword, which he drew from its seat. He dispatched him and cut off his head. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for battle, my fingers for war. Blessed be the Lord. My refuge and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues my people under me. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. O oh God, I will sing a new song to you with a ten-string lyre. I will chant your praise, you who give victory to kings, and deliver David, your servant, from the evil sword. Blessed be the the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. entered the synagogue, there was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than destroy it? but they remained silent. Look around at them, looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart, Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. The theme for the day's readings is trusting in the Lord. In the first reading, David trusted the Lord when he had to battle the Philistine. And in this one, the man with the withered hand trusted in the Lord to cure his hand. Now that first reading that Mrs. Dunkley wrote, that 
so sounded quite like, you know, it's like watching a science fiction movie, wasn't it? Like watching The Lord of the Rings, a great battle scene. That story actually appears twice in the Old Testament. The other version of it, the Philistine has a name, Goliath, David and Goliath. So we know this story. We know the story about the young boy taking on this supposed giant in battle and his trusting in the Lord, he was able to win the battle. We've heard this story. It's a story so familiar that even non-Catholics, non-Christians know the story. It's become this phrase. Whenever anybody is dealing with odds that are against them, we refer to it as being a David and Goliath story. Is that familiar with everyone? So trusting in the Lord is what we bring out of this against big obstacles that we may, we may experience in life. The second hint story, the man with the withered hand. There's a couple of things that happen there. I took a class one time where they pointed out that this is the first time in that gospel where you start to hear about the powers that be at the time of Christ wanting to prepare for his death, the death that will happen there. The fact that Jesus came was a threat to power. The fact that Jesus gave proof of these miracles really showed them it showed the powers to be the people that were in control. It really scared them. And so when they would see things like this, they would challenge Jesus, and they would see things like this, and it started to show that there was a threat to power because they saw the Messiah not as somebody who was coming to save souls, but as somebody who was going to rise to political power, to religious power. So the Pharisees got very scared. So again, there's this story of our Savior coming up against an obstacle, an obstacle of, of the rules. In our own modern time, you know, our church has a lot of rules. But if you look at the rules of the church referred to as the code of canon law, you'll hear a phrase in there periodic, periodically, insofar as possible. If you have the opportunity to do good, you should take that opportunity to do it. Insofar as possible, you should make something happen. So these Pharisees challenged Jesus Jesus saw this man that needed healing. There were these rules, but Jesus healed anyway because it caused good. Now, what's the lesson that we can learn in our everyday lives here at St. Vincent Ferrer and in our homes and in our lives? The trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord that he's always going to have us do the right thing, that he's always going to give us the right things in life. But another lesson is, in doing the right thing and in living out our lives as Catholics, living out our lives to be as good as we can be, there are going to be obstacles. Sometimes those obstacles are things. Sometimes those obstacles are time. But a lot of times those obstacles can be other people. Sometimes those obstacles can be the rules that we think we need to live by but might prevent us from doing something good. So we need to learn to trust the Lord. We need to learn how to face our obstacles and to move on and do the things that we should do to live our life of faith as Christians. Let's bring before the Lord our prayers as may be best for us, our parish, and our school as we seek to do God's best in our life. We pray for the Holy Roman Church that she would always give us strength and courage in our mission of spreading the gospel, we pray to the Lord. For our civic and national leaders, may God grant them wisdom and patience and respect for the dignity of all human life. We pray to the Lord. For those whose lives are affected by illness, sickness, anxiety, depression, discouragement, may the peace of Christ protect and sustain them. We pray to the Lord. For our faith community, our parish, our school, and our families, may God provide healing and strength for any burdens we carry. We pray to the Lord. 
for our faithful departed, especially the deceased members of the Moore family for whom this Mass is offered, that God may welcome them into his loving embrace. We pray to the Lord. Father, you created us, and we will be restless unless we rest in you. Help us trust in your plan for our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Celebrating this memorial of our salvation, we humbly ask your mercy, Lords, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of love through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him you brought us to the knowledge of your truth, so that by the bond of one faith and one baptism we might become his body. Through him you poured out your Holy Spirit among all nations, so that in a wondrous manner he might create unity in the diversity of your gifts, dwelling within your adopted children and filling and ruling the whole church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, 
you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with St. Vincent Ferrer, and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Dennis, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you and peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the words, and my soul shall be healed. Although we are many, we are one bread, we are one body, for we all partake of the one bread and the one chalice. for the communion procession is number 195, sorry, 195, pardon, 194. Let all mortal flesh keep silence, number 194. Let 
blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descended, our full homage to demand. King of kings yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood. And let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Okay, kids, I know we have a Bengal spirit wear day coming up. Is that right, Mrs. Dunkley? In honor of that, 31 years, way before you guys were ever even thought of, and the fact that Friday night I'll be saying Mass for the Catholic Bengals and coaches and players, we're going to close this Mass by saying, who day? On three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Excellent work. Make it a great who day week, everyone. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our recessional is number 562. Sing of the Lord's goodness, number 562. <laughs> Sing of your 